This is the world's first live daily LGBTQ evening news show, literally out of the closet and into the headlines on Prue News Tonight. Everyone at Hot Spots Magazine, Happening Out Television Network and Queer News Tonight wish you happy holidays, Merry Christmas and especially Happy New Year's. In 2023, Queer News Tonight did more than 2,000 television stories about the LGBTQ plus community. This is more than the entire rest of the world combined. We're proud of our nonprofit role of providing our community the news, information and conversation that is so important to our community. We're doing this special Queer News Tonight called 25 of 23. We're going to remind you of the 25 top stories of 2023. Let's hope that 2024 will bring you everything you hope for and the dreams for the LGBTQ plus community will come true. These are the most important stories of the year. Here are the top 25 of 23 for Tuesday, December 26th. It's been a big year for wrestling. I mean wrestling. In June, we reported on the crowd's reaction when a professional wrestler came out. Number 20 of 23, Crowd goes wild for out pro wrestler Anthony Bowens shouting he's gay. Anthony Bowens got a Pride Month surprise when the crowd started chanting he's gay repeatedly at a match after a female reporter made a ridiculous blunder. She told him that she could tell he was into her. In a tweet sent after the match, Bowens celebrated the moment saying he would not have believed if anyone had told him years ago that his arena would be chanting, he's gay, to support him. He said, quote, it's pretty cool to see how far we've come. Still, more work to do. Happy Pride, end quote. Bowens is currently one of the most popular people in wrestling and made history as the first out gay wrestler to become an all elite wrestling champion. Under the team name, The Acclaimed, Bowens and his wrestling partner, Max Caster, won AEW's Tag Team Championship in 2022. So when the duo took to the ring for the AEW Rampage, QTV reporter Harley Cameron's statement was obviously uninformed. In an exciting update, the Acclaimed has officially confirmed its inclusion in the upcoming AEW Fight Forever video game. This came after a lot of fans were worried that Anthony Bowens and Max Caster would be left out. Wow, what an interesting story. I had said in the beginning I used to be an athlete and all I could think of is like there's no way in the world I would have wanted anyone to shout that in the middle of my tennis match yeah. for any reason. <laughs> oh. And really for, for him to stand in wrestling, I mean, this used to be a very homophobic environment, right? It's uh, still it's toxic masculinity. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. Yeah. And for him to stand there in his little outfit and say into the microphone, and it wasn't a stampede, which is nice, because people were yelling and screaming that tie that Target put up a pride flag, right? They were like ready to rip the store apart. For him to be able to do that, he uh, wasn't booed. And he wasn't was booed. He was, no, and people were, yeah. What, anybody know yeah. what city this was in? Anybody know what city this was in? I don't. No idea. I don't. It's I don't encouraging, know, though. No, it's super you know, encouraging. And, and, and Paul, uh, you, you, you're right. It's very, it's looked at as very homophobic. Thing, but it's the gayest um, sport, ever. sport entertainment <laughs> out there. Right. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. Back when I was a kid, yeah. it was Hulk Hogan <laughs> and, and, and Captain Lou. We all watched. We all watched. Like, no straight person's wearing that stuff out. Yeah. Nobody is wearing that stuff out. Makeup and tights. Okay? Yeah, exactly. Think about it. You're a drag queen. All right? You literally are a drag queen. Okay? I love Sting. Sting was I, my favorite. I hate to up. burst. I love Sting. I hate to burst a bubble, but we all know that it's scripted. Right. Of so, it wait, what? Oh. Scripted. Pro wrestling. It's scripted. Okay, we'll talk. Knows, we'll knows. talk after the show. We'll talk after the show. No, no, no. I, no, I, I like, I, I like the idea that they, they actively, right. actually, I like that that the scriptwriter actually put it into the story. That means they planned it in advance. There wasn't an yeah. accident. Mm -hmm. This is actually a pretty awesome thing to do. I mean, yeah. uh, pro wrestling is like soap opera. That's why people watch yeah. it. That's why right. straight guys watch it. That's that's their version of Days of Our Lives. That's why. That's why. <laughs> but, you know, watch. but you know what? They, but you know what wasn't in the script? The crowd. 
Right. That's true. No. And you never know that, how, and never know the, how, the, how the camera right. could that's go. Exactly and let's say, let, let me give a big shout out to that reporter, Harley Cameron. <laughs> girl. <laughs> <laughs> Boobs and boots for days, girl. <laughs> Call me. I got an oh opening my. on Thursday. <laughs> wow. Oh okay. my. Beautiful. Um, I'm not making an opening joke. Yeah. No, you're not. Nope. <laughs> you're not. You're not. But not, how not going there. Because when you first started reading it, I was like, oh no, they started heckling him or something like that, you know? And I remember as a kid, people, and I did a reel about this the other day. Follow me on social media right where i'm at the parade and i'm and someone's behind me screaming faye is gay faye is gay and i'm like i remember being shouted that in ridicule when i was a kid right. and being bullied for something like right. that and then now being at pride where everybody's celebrated. happy right. celebrating that we're gay right. you know so we take these little steps we take a shit ton of steps back but those little ones that we take forward hold them in your heart for a little while longer you know because you never know how long we have them yeah yeah he was the biggest fake in political history, and he's gay. George Santos' storied 12-month career as a congressman from New York crashed and burned. Part of the story was porn. It's a story made for the 1990s National Enquirer. Number 19 of 23, say goodbye to George Santos because of OnlyFans. I'll, I'll indulge you this. I just discovered what OnlyFans was about three weeks ago when it was brought up in a discussion in my office. What do you think? And I was, ve I was oblivious to the whole concept. <laughs> uh, uh, you just can't tell the truth. What are you thinking in that moment as a staffer? I was listening to the interview um, in an earpiece with when Kennedy said that, and I tried so hard not to laugh loud enough for audio to pick it up because I thought, oh, okay, here's another lie. Um, because, I mean, I hate to say it, and now that the report indicates that he in, he in fact knew about OnlyFans because, uh, you know, he used campaign funds to uh, uh, open an account. Oh. Fox News host Kennedy recently interviewed George Santos, and she could not hold herself back from saying, quote, oh, you just can't tell the truth, end quote, to Santos in response to a question about OnlyFans. This interview took place after part of the damning ethics report released recently claims that Santos spent campaign funding on OnlyFans account, which was clearly in violation of campaign funding guidelines. This is only the tip of the iceberg in Santos' ethical issues, which led the out 35-year-old congressman to say he will not run for re-election next term. Rep. Michael Guest, Republican in Mississippi, said the evidence uncovered by his committee is more than sufficient to warrant expulsion. The resolution is expected to come up to a vote after the Thanksgiving recess next week. The ethics panel said an investigation into Santos spending had found he'd only paid for he paid for OnlyFans subscriptions from fifty thousand dollars in campaign donations wow. that were diverted to his personal accounts in October 2022. Still, the GOP congressman had claimed back in March that he didn't know what OnlyFans was. In addition to the raunchy interactions, the ethics panels found report found Santos had used donor money for stays in Atlantic City and the Hamptons, as well as Botox treatments, a $4,000 Hermes purchase, and $6,000 worth of goods from Ferragamo stores. I'm obsessed with the fact that we now are just like blindly saying, what do you mean? OnlyFans? What's that? Like, come on. In the peak COVID, OnlyFans took over everything. You heard about OnlyFans. You know someone who does OnlyFans. I didn't know about OnlyFans. What's that? You have receipts of my spending on my campaign budget. What do you mean? It's not public knowledge. Wow. Girl, come on. No, but he's uh, even more of an idiot, right? I mean, like, I can't even, I don't know about you folks, but I can't keep his lie straight anymore, okay? He had family in 9-11. He's Jewish. He started a GoFundMe for a dog that he didn't own. He's never heard of OnlyFans. I mean, like, I mean, you know, he's just... He, you he know, makes, he makes, keep it going. He makes you know I mean? Trump look like a truth well, teller. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> actually, he makes Trump look like a Boy Scout, you know? Actually, I was going to say he's very Trumpian, you know? Yeah. He, uh -huh. In that he thinks that he can say whatever and just get away with it. And people are just going to... And, and like, the receipts. And don't, receipts. Hello, receipts. Care. Oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, I didn't do that. What are you talking right, about? Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah, the delusion, very, right? The, the delusion. That's yes. a great word to put it. Delusion. Oh, oh, sociopath. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. He's a professional liar. He's so... He's ridiculous. Yeah, he's so outrageous. But how are you going to pay for OnlyFans with an account that money is, you know what I mean? Like, come on, like, and, you know, oh, public get, funding, public funding. You know what I mean? If you're gonna, yeah. you know, come on, if you're gonna have a grinder, have it on another phone that's not that doesn't belong to the government. Get you know the burner, I mean? like, come, on. come on. And you know, let's not forget that the 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 GOP, those people, have been standing behind him all this time, and it, it's taken 
it's it's had to get to this level. Yeah. Yeah. To this crazy. Well, it's been crazy. Fox oh, News called this, him a liar. Right. 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 To get to Kennedy. And by the can we just talk about that brilliance of Kennedy? That <laughs> under the, <laughs> she, the way she handled that it was hysterical. She did it. But it's mm-hmm. taken this much. It took OnlyFans, which probably the reason why because most of the GOP <laughs> is also contributing to <laughs> OnlyFans, <laughs> right? I mean because. Why not? Yeah. But, you know, it's just crazy. But the, 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 the reality man. is it's politics, though, right? Because right. they want to be control the House. They, right? Right. they, they need yeah. to control they need the House. So they need, they, they need him. And so yeah. that's why, you know. Um, but he's finally going to do it, get his day, you know. And I've talked to Congressman Richie Torres a lot about this. And, you know, he's appalled by him, especially being from the, uh, the uh, New York. You know, Richie's from the Bronx. Uh, crazy. Yeah, and being, being a Latino. Well. Like, being come a Latino. on. He's yeah. just appalled by it. It's an embarrassment to us, New yeah. York. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, 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 like, and it took gay, so gay people, right? Gay, gay people in general. But it took yes. him so long to say, ah, you know what? I'm not going to run. Coño. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like come on. Thank God. Okay. But, thank but God. Yes, worse, you're not going to run. It's like, worse uh, even more than Kevin McCarthy was protecting him just to keep the numbers, yes. you know? Just, just to keep it's, the numbers. It's a game. It's a political game. That's it. It's, yes. it's embarrassing. Very embarrassing. Let's see how this guy, Michael Johnson, the new speaker. Uh-huh. Let's see. What uh-huh. He's even worse. Him. I'm like, no. Uh-huh. You'll go to the Bible. Yeah. But, but I want to. I want to know who he was paying on OnlyFans. I'm just curious. Well, because sixty thousand on OnlyFans. That's if, not. If, that's. Oh, sorry. That's four subscriptions. <laughs> that's the OnlyFans that I subscribe to cost twenty nine ninety nine. Or free. <laughs> Okay. Austin Summers. That's mine. Get it right. <laughs> Austin Summers, you're worth my twenty nine ninety nine. Okay, yeah. just so you know, you're worth it. But it takes a lot to come up with fifty Hello. grand. That's not just one subscription, no. Poppy, you no, know? That's multiple, yeah. Right? Boy's okay. a fiend. Okay. No. Queer News Tonight has done dozens of stories in twenty twenty three about the state legislature. But in April it was clear that the real mission was of radical conservatives. Number eighteen of twenty three. Florida session and GOP state representative says it's time to erase the gay community. Definition. And they're the ones that are saying this definition applies to them. Well, if it means erasing a community because you have to target children, when well, damn right we ought to do it. Republican Randy Fine represents Florida's 33rd district covering Brevard County and Melbourne Beach. He is currently trying to get his own HB 1423 through the House a bill that would penalize any business that allows a child to view an adult life performance, in quotes, he has suggested erasing the whole LGBTQ plus community if, as he claims, they continue to target children. During a state legislative committee hearing, Fine admonished those who were not supporting his homophobic bill. Fine disputes the disputes his bill would target all drag shows, claiming that his bill does not use the word drag. He said adult performances in venues such as Hooters would not be impacted. (laughs) On Facebook, Fine said HB 1423 would ban the city of Melbourne from welcoming drag queens, adult entertainers, from grooming our children. The bill passed the State Administration and Technology Appropriations Subcommittee by a vote of 10 to 5. Today, as we approach the Iowa primary, Nikki Haley is looking as the more reasonable moderate Republican as opposed to Donald Trump or Ron DeSantis. But in February, we reported her thoughts on Florida's student and school initiatives. Number 17 of 23, Nikki Haley says Florida's don't say gay didn't go far enough. Stomping for votes in her long shot bid for the Republican 2024 presidential nomination. Former South Carolina governor and United Nations ambassador Nikki Haley is trying to prove she's just as anti-LGBTQ plus as Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, one of her likely challengers for the GOP nod. When asked about DeSantis's divisive parental rights in education law, aka the Don't Say Gay law, which bans discussion of gender and sexual orientation in kindergarten through third grade, Haley told a crowd at a New Hampshire town hall that the legislation is too timid, proving that Haley is ready to make LGBTQ plus youth a target in her campaign. The politician gave an interview to foxnews.com after the town hall, elaborating on her desire to make the mention of gay and transgender people verboten in elementary schools. Haley's record record on LGBTQ plus issues is abysmal. As noted by GLAAD, Haley has said President Joe Biden's support of transgender rights will destroy women's sports, saying, quote, across the sporting world, the game is being rigged against women and in favor of biological men, end quote. 
She also opposed marriage equality as both a South Carolina state representative and governor. She has also rejected matching funds for a program offering HIV medication to lower income patients. Now, she's also an ageist. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know this, yeah. but uh, she's also very much a part of, if you're too old, I don't want you in my house. Wow. What? So, yeah, that's her new thing now. Well, she's perfect to run with Trump, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, right. I don't get it. But yeah, in that town hall, there's uh, there's a video clip. I believe you can probably find it on YouTube where she's now saying, why are we going to have to require mental exams for some of these people that are with us here in the house? And blah, 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 blah. Oh, have yeah, to she wants to her. mentally check Biden because he's eight. Yeah. Well, you know, him and a bunch of other people. So she's like, I'm going to put this in place. I'm thinking, good luck, honey. Um, that's not going to work. Well, she's, you know, she, she could use a mental check. I mean, because right? exactly. her memory seems to be very, very askew because she has waffled more than a cook at the Waffle House. You, I mean, she, she has, I mean, she's back. She's just, she's for uh, Trump. She's against Trump. Oh, really? She, oh, yeah. She's been wa- <laughs> yeah. She's a flip flopper than a Waffle House cook. I'm mm-hmm. telling you. She she said as recently as September that if Donald Trump said uh, he was going to run uh, for president, she would not run uh, for re-election. You know, for a second term, that she would not run, and uh, that she supported him. Uh, he announced uh, running two months later, and she did uh, this last week what she did, which is announced for president. Um, that's the flip flop that you're talking about. You know, my number one problem uh, with Nikki Haley, I'm, you know, she's not, <clears throat> she looks credible because she's not batshit crazy. Right. Okay, so if you, if you put the, the crazy bar, bats, the Republican Party. Uh, right. As a, what bar. is it, MTJ? What is it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mar- Marjorie Taylor Greene. With her big old fur coat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on there? Watch Bill Maher if you want to hear a great <laughs> analysis on Marjorie Taylor Greene. Um, the interesting thing to me about her is um, uh, she proved at the United Nations really how dangerous she is mm. because she flip flopped all over the place this in the United right, Nations, yeah. and 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 so Donald Trump craziness, her desire to appease him and he be the you know lord and and master of Nikki Haley's plantation in South Carolina. Um, she flip-flopped so much in terms of what she said in the world stage at the United Nations. She became scary for me. She doesn't rail the way Donald Trump does or the way Lindsey Graham does or the, even the way Marco Rubio does, but she's equally dangerous mm-hmm. because if you do not listen to what she's saying carefully and where she is on that position and where it's going to change next, She's going to get you every single time. And that's what Nikki Haley she is has going that, to do. It's, a, it's deceiving, that demeanor of a Mike Pence. Yeah. Like, I'm completely I'm normal. Uh, yes. I'm yeah. yeah. And this calm voice. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. wow. That is scary. You hey, have now. to watch the Stepford Wives motions yeah, totally. very yeah. carefully. Uh, very that. One of the worst days in Florida's LGBTQ plus history when we reported what DeSantis and the GOP pushed into law. Activists said the 2023 Florida legislative session was the single most hateful attack on the LGBT plus community since 1969's Stonewall Civil Rights Movement began. Number 16 of 23, DeSantis and Florida GOP supermajority and drag queens and gay pride celebrations. Did Governor Ron DeSantis and the Florida GOP supermajority and drag queens and gay pride celebrations with today's new law? Today, the Florida legislature is debating FS 827.11. It may be the most anti-LGBTQ plus legislation in American history, at least since the Stonewall riots in 1969. The language of the law will define live performance to a standard that virtually would make drag queen performance impossible in Florida in its current format. This is a very complicated story, and we encourage you to follow closely as the law is designed on a very legal basis to ban drag queens, force gay pride organizations to ban drag or cancel their events, and will affect every bar, restaurant, hotel, and event in Florida that hosts an event with a drag queen, whether children or alcohol are present or not. 827.11 827.11 defines, quote, adult live performance means any show, exhibition, or other presentation in front of a live audience, which, 
in whole or in part, depicts or simulates nudity, sexual conduct, sexual excitement, or specific sexual activities as those terms are defined in existing law, lewd conduct, or the lewd exposure of prosthetic or imitation genitals or breasts. The definition of this live performance continues to define, predominantly appeals to a prurient, pr pr excuse me, shameful or morbid interest. It's patently offensive to prevailing standards in the adult community of this state, end quote. This incredibly vague standard is hinged on a Supreme Court decision defining prurient. We will explain that definition in a moment, but this is a key component that will set this statute, if passed, to survive state and even a federal constitutional challenge. Today's 827.11 continues, quote, by saying, as a whole, with respect to what is suitable material or conduct for the age of the child present, and taken as a whole is without serious literary, artistic, political, or scientific value for the age of the child present, end quote. This definition in the law will allow any enforcement interpretation to remove the legal defense of artistic or other value and will use the Supreme Court decision defining prurient standard as that may overcome even a constitutional First Amendment defense. 827.11 has virtual certainty of passing because of the GOP supermajority in the Florida legislature and the desires of Governor Ron DeSantis. Critics bring attention to how insidious the law's introduction is today. Prurient is a 1984 Supreme Court case, Brockett versus Spokane decision. The ruling decided that the term prurient was not overbroad in interpretation and is not constitutionally overbroad. The GOP framers of this law have specifically defined drag ban using the constitutionally protected term prurient directly in this legislation. It was likely designed to prevent legal court challenges. In a decision, prurient was defined as, quote, that which incites lasciviousness or lust, obscenity, lewd, obscene materials, and creates longing, end quote. This interpretation was supported by 1957's Roth v. United States and 1973's Miller v. California to further define state criminal statutes governing obscenity. One part of the test adopted by the court requires that in order to be found obscene, the materials in question must appeal to the prurient interest in sex. The Florida legislature will defend today's law as drag queens with their breastplates, exotic makeup, wigs, and costumes are an inherent sexual experience. Worse, the Court of Appeals invoked the overbreadth doctrine to invalidate other state statutes before the state courts even had an opportunity to apply and, and construe that law. Using this prurient interest approach could interfere with the enactment as well as the enforcement of both federal and state obscenity legislation. Finally, the court found that lewd is synonymous with obscene matter. And that means any matter which the average person applying contemporary community standards would find when considered as a whole appeals to the prurient interest and which explicitly depicts or describes patently offensive representations or depictions of ultimate sexual acts, normal or perverted, actual or simulated, or masturbation, fellatio, cunnilingus, bestiality, excretory functions, or lewd exhibition of the genitals or genital area, including artificial representation. This is likely why the Hyatt Regency Miami case focused on the alleged simulated sexual acts by drag queens and justified today's legislation. On this matter, the court ruled, quote, and which, when considered as a whole and in the context in which it is used, lack serious literary, artistic, political, or scientific value, end quote. So, the legislation introduced and debated today sets up a Supreme Court standard and redefines it against drag queens. Today's legislation is designed to balance and prevent legal constitutional challenges, even from the First Amendment. The court cites New York versus Ferber in, 1990, in 1982 as the traditional rule is that, quote, a person to whom a statute may constitutionally be applied may not challenge that statute on the ground that it may conceivably, uh, conceivably be applied unconstitutionally to others in situations not before the court, end quote. 
The First Amendment overbreath doctrine, therefore, is a limited exception to this rule. It permits a party whose actions are not immune from punishment under a properly drafted law to challenge the constitutionality of the law of a, quote, sweeping statute or one incapable of limitation, end quote. In other words, prurient interest may be a court dog whistle for this ban to survive legal challenges. Today is a dramatic oh. moment in Florida. That's a lot to digest, Al. It, it is very... And it's scary. ...complicated from the standpoint of making sure um, that we try to walk through what the legislature is doing. This amendment that takes place and goes to the floor at about uh, 1.30 this afternoon uh, has virtually no chance of not passing. They have a supermajority that can do whatever they want. There's no stopping it if they decide we're going to pass this. All of the dog whistles of the way this amendment is written is to make it constitutional, to fight off challenge, to get a Supreme Court to say First Amendment rights in terms of free speech do not trump this local community standard of the citizens of the state of Florida and to win this battle. The prurient um, uh, standard is specifically quoted in the statute, which is the dog whistle of the Supreme Court's decision to define obscenity. And so as a result, what happens here is unlike the challenges that we've seen so far, uh, our house, uh, uh, Broward Center, uh, Hyatt Miami, Orlando, uh, et cetera, this, if passed, would essentially prevent the possibility of being in drag because breastplates are innately designed to be sexual in nature. And as a result, would violation of this law. And they preempt the argument that it's an art form. We've talked about this repeatedly. Mm -hmm. I've said over and over again, it can't survive a Supreme Court speech challenge until they do until this. this. So, Al, so then what happens to Miami Beach Pride, Stonewall, a uh, gay prom that's coming up? All these things include drag queens. They're dividing and conquering and winning by their dividing and conquering our community. Uh, Tampa Pride gave us the first clue of this over the weekend when their president, Kerry West, said, I'm concerned if we're going to be able to do Pride mm -hmm. again in Tampa. When he was blowing that dog whistle, it wasn't as clear to me of what he really meant. And now it's clear to me in this amendment that was launched today. Because what this law will do is make a Pride organization, a restaurant, like our house, a bar, like the pub or Georgie's Alibi uh, or the palace on South Beach, make the decision, I'm going to operate without drag queens or I'm not going to operate. Oh and God. as a result, it, if this passes, there's going to be a very liberal interpretation of enforcement of this law to say that you're in violation of this state law. And as a result, uh, a pride organization will have to decide we are going to stand with drag or we're going to cancel our pride event. Well, obviously we have to stand with drag. That's, <sighs> they, you're right. They're trying to divide us. They're trying to conquer us. They're trying to get us to drop the T from LGBTQ. They're trying to um, say, well, okay, we can keep <clears throat> your gay sports bar, but you're going to have to close lips or you're going to have to close the pub. And then of course, next they will come for Jim Barr. Or you drink. know, for the and, first time, yeah. I tell you today, I apologize yeah. for interrupting you. I, I have heard Scott Galvin at Safe Schools mm -hmm. say repeatedly over the last five or six months, y'all, they're going to eventually come right into our bars. They're going to eventually yes. come right after LGBT. Today is the first day where the lights go on for me that th this is insidious. Yeah. Because the nature of how they've written this law is using a constitutional already decided justification of mm -hmm. prurient interest, connecting it to sexuality uh, and the obscenity of sexuality in public, and saying it doesn't meet community interest, because this is what the community broadly thinks. It does not mean, uh, it doesn't meet artistic or scientific value, so you can't fight uh, the, the law or the legislation on those grounds, and 
The individual state courts can't reinterpret what we've done on this using settled law. It'll be challenged, but settled law. And finally, it is not a First Amendment constitutional fight. Well, here's the thing. It's, we are at the point now where dressing in drag is political speech. That's what it is. That's the defense we can make. We could all get up in our finest frocks and go to Tallahassee and march, be arrested. And we should be able to make a case, hopefully, that we, this is political. The Stonewall riots were political. And quite frankly, we're at the place where we could be risking a riot again. Because if the city, uh, and I'm just putting it out there, uh, if the city of Fort Lauderdale decides we're not going to issue the permit because we don't want to have the fight with the governor, um, then we should put a call out that every single gay, lesbian, bisexual, trans, queer. everyone, queer, come out in drag, march, and take over the street the third weekend of June. Now, obviously, it wouldn't affect this year. This is a fight that we'll, we'll have next, uh, next Pride season. But... So it, doesn't, so, it doesn't affect, so it doesn't affect well, this price it would, season. It would likely not go into effect like, until July no, 1st. Uh, yeah, it wouldn't go into effect until... Well, this doesn't just affect... The law is not written so that it's just drag or the queer community. Anything... I mean, we... Uh, Miami, Fort Lauderdale is a hot spot for all these Latino artists to come in to do shows. There's cabaret of venues. So my only hope, I think, legally, which I didn't have time to research, this was the... Uh, uh, unequal enforcement, which is, I'm sure that they're going to be issuing these these stays or injunctions towards drag bars. But if they're not doing it towards all the other Miami nightlife, then there is a case to be had with that. And you, it goes, it does go beyond, you know, the, the gay scene and gay bars and restaurants because, you know, you have Fianna in Miami Beach as a cabaret theater. There's a tons of cabaret theaters in South Florida. And Faye and I went to go see the cabaret show there, and we were probably the only queer people in the audience. Yep. It was full of very wealthy, you know, tourists and residents of Miami Beach that were there. And, and all the was, performers were half naked. Right. And it was more sexual than any drag show yep. that I've ever been to. But even further than that, you know, you're now it's part of the arts. And, you know, I've been fortunate to sit on the National Endowment for the Arts for the state of Florida, you know, and see grants that come across for pride festivals and, you know, things of that nature for, for years to come, you know, and it's very shocking because not only for, you know, beyond prides, you know, this affects Broadway, you know, Mrs. Doubtfire is about to take off and do a national tour you know, from New York, uh, opera, you know, there's a lot of different art forms that have drag in, you know, part of their theater, uh, you know, so it's very, uh, I'm very curious to see where this goes. Uh, and then also very shocked that politicians are making this, you know, their, you know, thing that they're going to be remembered for is that their attack on drag queens. That's so we, we've, uh, we've seen the outcome of this. Uh, we watch it in our television and it's called Handmaid's Tale. Oh God. Mm -hmm. That's what we're watching. Yeah. Yeah. In Florida yeah. in 2023. Well, I mean, and what do we want? Do we Who want a going state? to run for president yeah. of the United States next? Ron DeSantis. So are people going to go take the streets? Are we going to stop traffic? Are we going to do yes. all this stuff? Because this is what I told, I told my wife and my wife responds, the Cuban, right? She's like, no one cares about us, Faye. No one is going to go out into the streets and protest. No one cares. And that hit me like a ton of bricks to hear that from my own wife. She truly believes that we don't care enough and we're not going to make anything about of this. The debate um, was this afternoon at 1.30, and we are doing 20 minutes as breaking news on this show. Are we going to do something about it? We absolutely are. We have to. Well, this we is where the allies come in. You know, everyone who's had a bachelorette party at Lips or Palace, you know, all the tourists that have come here, this is the time we need everyone else to come out and support us now. The definition today is insidious, because think of it this way. Um, they are tagging to the prurient interest standard of the Supreme Court and saying it becomes lewd and lascivious and sexual. And how are we going to thread the needle when your, your artistic and scientific value is preempted by the law yeah. because the community standard says this does not meet artistic and scientific value to say that the drag queen who is in, um, in a breastplate at, at the minimum wig, dress, makeup, etc., is not designed to titillate in some way. How, are, how do we make that argument? Because if we can't make that argument, 
they will be in violation of the law. And once that is established, drag is over. Well, the thing is, everything is titillating. Someone is titillated by everything. I can put my thumb up here on my nose. Someone out there watching is going to go, oh, give me some more thumb action. Like everything can be titillating. I, sex is everything. Sex is life. Sex is death. Sex is fun. Sex is, is, is challenging. Uh, yep. the, one, the one relation, and I'm curious to your response, mm -hmm. because one of the things that I and, and many of our anchors have continued to say is, wait, are you going to ban Hooters? Hooters would not be banned under this standard. First off, it's not artificial. It Drag is artificial. It doesn't need to be artificial it, under it, this ban. It, 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 under the ban, the idea is that under community standard, you're violating the lewd and lascivious and sexual nature. Hooters will not be defined by the broad community as lewd and lascivious under this standard. Drag queens will be because of the breastplates and the makeup and the male gender, theoretically, or the trans uh, identity of the drag queen. And a server at Hooters will not rise to this standard. Well, then we need to write legislation that includes breast augmentation then. Yeah, what if... What, that's, yeah, artificial. What if that's, that's artificial. That's artificial. artificial. Yeah, sure. uh, uh, a plus-sized man at the beach walks around has in a boobs. Speedo. He has moves. You know, when... You when put a I, dress on him? Is that now illegal? Is he going to be cited? I mean, I'm not saying. I don't know. I'm just saying these are all How questions. far will it go? How far... Is it going to go? And given the fascist mentality in Tallahassee, it's going to go pretty far. It's going to. And 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 one last thought, and we do have to move on. Um, the extent of how far they're willing to go versus how does our house stand up to this? How does the pub stand up How does up Lips to this? stand up to this? How does Lips stand up to this? Which is how predominantly does... seen straight people are in there. Exactly. How does the drag queen stand up to this? That's their livelihood. The moment the state targets, I won't even use a name, X name, how do they stand up to this? This is an insidious day in Florida. Can I, insidious. can I make one more plea? Donate to HRC, donate to Task Force, donate Equality to Florida. the ACLU, Equality Florida, donate to them because they are going to be our first and last line of defense on this issue. Dress and drag and go to work dressed like that. Yeah, okay. Well, each of the 31 cities and towns that make up the greater Fort Lauderdale area are unique, offering their own brand of diversity, vibrant culture, and sense of community. From the breathtaking coastline of the Atlantic Ocean to the expansive Florida Everglades, or the LGBTQ plus shops and entertainment in Wilton Manors, these cities, each in their own way, make Broward County the best place to live for work and play for everyone under the sun. That's today's headlines for the only daily LGBTQ plus evening news show in the world. At the end of the year, we express gratitude. At Hotspots Magazine and Happening Out Television Network, we express that gratitude. We are the only news and talk streaming television network on Roku, Apple TV, Android TV, and Amazon Fire TV. More than 500,000 subscribers watch us there and watch us on their home televisions. On YouTube, we've had more than 10 million views this year. There's nothing like it in our LGBTQ plus world, and we thank you. Enjoy your holidays, and we turn our attention to 2024 and all the stories about you, our LGBTQ plus community, that we're going to bring to the world. Good night.